the day I was debuting, they were like, oh, have you heard about your name change? I was like, no. And like, as soon as I said no, everybody... Uh-oh. <laughs> and they, like, they, like, nobody wanted to tell me. Okay, it's Scott here for Rebellious Noise, and I'm with none other than Dewdrop. How are you doing? I'm doing very well today, Scott. How are you? I'm good, I'm good. Let's start on the name. I know a lot of people have questions about the name. Piper Niven, Viper, now Dewdrop. Where did Dewdrop come from? Vince. <laughs> <laughs> Simple answer. There we go. Um, I showed up to Raw, and I had absolutely no idea that my name was changing at yeah. all. I'd been, I'd been in America, like, I think I arrived in America on April 1st. Um, and it was, I, I was there a while before I was ready to debut mm. because um, the way that things had happened in the UK with COVID, there was no training in NXT UK, so I hadn't been in a ring properly and I don't know, must have been about half a year. Mm. Um, so I was just like getting some training time in and stuff like that, and nobody, nobody had said anything about name change. It wasn't until the day I was debuting, they were like, Oh, have you heard about your name change? And I was like, No, and like as soon as I said no, everybody. Uh-oh. <laughs> and then, like, they, like, nobody wanted to tell me. And I think it was Adam Pierce who was like, oh, your name's going to be Dewdrop. And I was like, okay. <laughs> like, sure. <laughs> yeah, it's, um, it's an interesting name. It's not what I expected. Yeah. Um, but how do you feel with this kind of run on Raw and this kind of, I guess, new kind of character and things like that? Because you are quite different to how you were, yeah. how we saw you over here in the UK at least. Uh, how are you feeling doing that kind of new style? Um, I'm kind of loving it, to be honest, because I'm getting to like showcase the other side of me, like my kind of like bright and cheery personality. Um, and I'm pretty like upbeat and cheerful in real life, so it's just trying to let like, more of the real life me okay, come yeah, through, yeah, yeah. which at times is really difficult for me because I'm pretty shy. Right. Um, but I'm getting there, I'm, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm getting my groove now, yeah, as I would yeah. say. Okay. You know what, i got to be honest, you're, you're winning me over on that then, yeah. because I feel like what, some of us fans, I think, would look at that and go, but we want to see, you know, because it's like you've earned this, you've got there, let's show the world what you're... But I understand, that's a good point, actually. The office, they know what you can do. That's how you got the job. That's, so it's a good chance to show them something that, else. That's why I'm here that's and point. that's why they're sending me to okay. Saudi Arabia and on the tour. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know what I'm doing, but apparently I'm doing it it's very well. It's going all right. It's going all right. <laughs> yeah. Um, we talked a little bit before the camera came on. We were talking about uh, when you were over here back in uh, the time, well, spending on the, on the Indies in the UK, really. And uh, just want to touch on that. Yeah, so we saw you at uh, York Hall in Bethnal Green. And now uh, we love York Hall. It's a great wrestling venue. We're from right by there. Um, so I'm not this in York Hall at all but Wembley Arena is a it's a bit of a change how does it feel to go from wrestling at York Hall which again it's got its own vibe it's oh, great yeah, absolutely. but to Very come to Wembley story. Arena how does that feel um, it's really cool for me because I'd never been in Wembley Arena before not even to like see a gig yeah. or anything like that and it was something I always really really wanted to do so for me to have my first experience there as a WWE superstar mm. it's pretty amazing and it's something that like I'll always be grateful for like everything I get to experience and like I think it's important to celebrate the successes and this is a this is a, a nice one for me. Brilliant. Okay, so one thing I also want to know is we are hearing a lot of rumours about WWE UK pay-per-views. I don't want to get you to commit to anything here, I won't look. <laughs> but if we are getting that, right? Now, I are, we've asked some of the guys from overseas here. Uh, it's a little bit harder for them, but I'm sure it'll be a bit easier for you. What from British culture would you like to see part of that show? Whether it's something you have in catering, uh, do you want Nando's in catering? Oh. Uh, do, we want, uh, do we want a certain celebrity that you know is, is big over here in the ring? Do we want something on the set? What would you like to see from British culture part of that um, oh, show? Can you, can you imagine, like, David Williams like coming out that would be, oh, that would be so good didn't expect that that would be so good that, but do you know that he would be great yeah. imagine he just came out and like leathered Bobby Lashley or something how good would that and be and then press the old buzzer yeah, yeah. 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 that would be yeah. so good or maybe Ant and Dick oh Ant and Dick oh, would be good that would be good that would be great yeah. and then backstage we've got to have some cottage pie and some real gravy these Americans you're missing don't know this stuff I'm, I'm guessing yeah. I did find a shop in Orlando but it's honest it's like $30 for some oxo kids oh, and I'm like this is extortionate it always is <laughs> Yeah, it's the reverse here. We get, you know, when we get American goods over here, Americans are like, "Why are you paying that much for it?" It's like, "Well, because it's just the way it is. It's not from here." So, I get, I get what you're saying. Um, okay, so before we get out of here as well, we we like the idea of a World Cup. Remember, WWE did that a few years ago. I kind of want them to do it again, uh, men and women. And we did a fantasy booking one last year. Now, our Scottish representative at the time was Nikki Cross, yeah. right? We've spoke to Kaylee Ray, and we said, tell us why you think it should be you. So now I'm asking you, do you drop? Why should you be our Scottish pick for our fantasy booking of the World Cup? Oh, I don't think, when you think of Scotland, I don't think you get any more Scottish than Drew Drop. I'm more Scottish <laughs> than I tend to shortbreads. Uh, I play bagpipes. That's up there. I own several kilts. 
Several kilts. Several okay. kilts. Um, my family name's very ancient, so I think there's, there's nobody more Scottish than Doodle. I mean, you put in a, that's a good case. Yeah, that I is a good so. case. All right, really appreciate that. Anyway. Do you know what? It should be see whoever, whoever can sing the entirety of the national anthem without looking up the lyrics. That's who gets to be the representative. <laughs> can we film that? I think that I itself would be it. fun. Can we get those guys in? We'll try it out. Yeah, brilliant. Anyway, thank you so much for, for speaking with us today. Congratulations on getting married recently as thank well. You. And uh, yeah, hope to see you continue to rise in WWE. Oh, thanks. thanks, guys. Cheers. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, lad. That was fun. Good, good. I'm good. Hey guys, this is WWE Superstar Doodrop and you're watching Rebellious Noise.